ability, aptitude, expertise, genius, gift. I'm the fucking talent. Hey, what's happened to Mike Schmidt, 40-year-old boy podcast? I must warn you, the air conditioning will come on at some point and make a noise. Uh, Because, look, I'm an independent show. I'm not one of these classy guys in a studio with plexiglass and people who care. No, I'm just, I I don't have people who care. I got person who cares. That's me. Hi. Uh, But, you know, there are plenty of people who have these uh, rooms where they go ahead and they record. I think they're called studios. Is that what they have? You know what I have? My house. And by my house, I mean my apartment, my my small little cube in the corner of an ant farm. That's where I'm, you know what? Get an ant farm right now. Get an ant farm out. And look at them as they walk through the trails and go ahead and dig out a corner right there in the bottom of the plexiglass, uh, right in the plastic case, right in the middle of that connect four filled with ants and uh, find a little spot for me. And that's where I am. That's where I'm broadcasting from. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm here live in the Internet on the Internet. That's where I live. I live in the Internet. Did you know that? I'm like a ghost. I'm travailing through the web. I'm, I'm like a spider. Ooh, I'm a verbal spider. I'm a chatty spider who lives in the World Wide Web. You want to get in here and get wrapped up wasp style? Because I'll eat a fucking wasp. I don't care. I know I told you before. I'm like, I don't eat bugs, but that's bullshit. Look at me changing my tune. Uh, someone, I don't know who it was on my on my Facebook page, was like, I think it's funny that you would eat a turtle, but you wouldn't eat a bug. And uh, that's that's far more thought than you really need to put into this show, guys. I got to be honest with you. And it made me think. I got to be honest. It made me go, when the fuck did I say I would eat a turtle? Because I don't recall that happening. I mean, I would bite the fuck out of a turtle. Clearly, maybe this person knows me better than I know myself. I think it was their friend. Uh, was it JD? It might have been. It was a gentleman. It was a person. And uh, and he said, I, I find it weird that you would eat a turtle, but not a bug. But see, the, here was the point. It wasn't about the fact that I would or wouldn't eat a bug. Because I said if I was in Japan, I would eat a bug. What I don't like, stranger on the internet, is uh, the idea that I, me, hi, Mike, your friend, your buddy, your internet chum, would get used to the idea of eating bugs. That's what I thought they were trying to do with these bags of cricket crisps. I don't care for it. I don't want it. Don't uh, look because I'll try it. Look, I'll bite. I'll bite a bug. I'll bite a beetle. I'm a beetle biter from way fucking back. I don't care. I'll chew on a, on a fucking lightning bug and get all that smeary yellow gunk in my mouth and smile at you with a glow tooth smile. That's what I'll do. Will I eat a worm? I don't know. They're kind of weird looking. If you fry them, though, I might chew them up like French fries. Maybe they're like the yucca plant. Maybe they're starchy. I don't know what a worm tastes like. My point is I would try a bug. Under good circumstances, not just out in the fucking wild. I'm not going to go ahead and go, ooh, look at this. Holy shit, a tarantula and bite the fuck out of it. I must cook it. There has to be a preparation. I need good things done to this tarantula in order for me to consider eating it. But I don't want it to be a staple of my diet guy on the Internet. See, don't you understand? That was the whole point was I didn't want people going, oh, you should like bugs. You should eat bugs. Here are bugs. Because then that's not good. I don't want to go ahead and get used to it. I don't want to be a guy who says, oh, yeah, why not? We're just eating bugs now. Because we've gotten so used to too many fucking things in this goddamn country, all right? One of them I will not get used to is eating fucking bugs. You're not about to bring me over to that side. I mean, if it happens, it happens. If it's fucking, if there's a fucking nuclear war and it's just me and and two of my neighbors and whatever the fuck. And they're like, oh, look at this. It's a caterpillar. I'm like, chomp. Because, I mean, I'm fucking starving. Because I'm watching people die and seeing bright lights and shit like that. It's freezing or hot or whatever the fallout would be. I'm not a nuclear scientist, folks. I'm not a nuclear physicist. I'm not a nuclear anything. I saw a movie called The Day After. I know that if there is a nuclear war, Jason Robard's hair is going to fall out. I do know that. Uh, Although it might be a little late for that. He might be a skull at this point. Isn't Robard's in the grave? You taking a dirt nap? I think so. I think he's fucking coffin surfing at this point. Goodbye, Robard's. Uh, all the president's men and their boss is dead. That's the new movie I'm going to make. I'm going to get together Redford and Hoffman and go, let's go ahead. Let's make a new movie. All the president's men are looking for their boss, but he's in the goddamn ground six feet under and all of his fucking hair has fallen off because he was in a nuclear war at one point later on with Steve Gutenberg. And, uh, and I think that's why his hair fell out. <laughs> they went to Jason Robards. This is truly what happened. He made the movie the day after. And uh, I'm telling you, his hair in the movie has fallen out. And you want to say it was because of the nuclear war and nuclear radiation fallout? No, it's because they said to him, hey, Jason Robards, don't you have an Oscar for all the president's men? Well, here's an unfortunate story. You're going to be starring in Steve Gutenberg's The Day After. And immediately a pile of follicles just fucking right out of his skull, blowing into the wind like a Robards tumbleweed blowing all over the goddamn place. He couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle the news. Uh, although I don't know if you've heard the news, there's good rocking tonight. Did you know, did you get, can you handle that news? Uh, I will tell you, I will say this, you know, who gave me that news. The doctor, I said, doctor, doctor, give me the news. Cause I got a bad case of loving you. And he said, by the way, there's good rocking tonight. That's how it works. I go to the doctor for my news. I don't, I don't trust the internet. I live here. Certainly I live in the internet, but I don't trust it to give me news. I must go elsewhere for my news. And that would be the doctor. I don't have health insurance, but I will schedule an appointment. I will show up and I'll go doctor, doctor. 
Dr. Bahadori, my doctor, my physician, give me the news. And then he will recite some headlines and I will walk out a chastened man because now I know about what's going on, yet I still have that bump. And he wouldn't look at the bump. The guy, I'll tell you what, he doesn't charge me any insurance to give me the news, which seems strange. But then uh, I'm like, hey, while I'm here, could you look at this bump? I cannot. All I can do is update you on what's going on in Tanzania because Dr. Bahadori is a specialist on Tanzania. It says it right on the door. Uh, Eye, ear, nose, lung, throat, and Tanzania. He's that guy. Uh, I live on the internet, folks. That's what I said. If you don't believe me, call Bing. Uh, I'm here. I'm there. I'm everywhere. And I and Bing, they they understand. Bing knows what I do every every day. They're a neighbor of mine, clearly, and I'm shouting into a microphone at some point during the week. See, they used to like it because they knew that it was going to be on Tuesday or Wednesday. I was going to be shouting into a microphone, but now I, I'm all over the place. And Bing doesn't know when they can get any rest. Bing doesn't know what to do. Uh, so maybe Bing hates me. Oh my God, what if Bing hated me? I would hate to be hated by Bing. Nobody wants to be hated by anybody, let alone Bing, their neighbor. Uh, that's a lie. Bing doesn't hate me. I bet Bing loves me. Bing loves me. You know what? Do me a favor. Cross your fingers right now on either hand, right or left. I don't care. Cross them. Now look at them. You see that? You see those two fingers? That's me and Bing. That's how close the two of us are. God damn it. <laughs> right there. Look at your hand. Fingers crossed. Uh, and while your hands, you know, while you've got those fingers crossed, tell a lie to somebody because it doesn't count. That's what we learned when we were children. As long as you cross your fingers, lies don't count. Oh my God. Is it any, any wonder why we're in all the trouble we are in as a country? Because we believed all these wive tales and, and nonsense. Hey, cross your fingers. You can tell a lie. Yay. Oh, that's good. Uh, step out of crack, break your mother's back. Oh, I better avoid that. Now let me ask you this. What, what if you step on a crack while you're crossing your fingers? You know what happens then? You don't believe that you've broken your mother's back. Even if it happens, you get home, she her broken, her back is broken. You go, ma, cross your fingers and you won't believe it either. And then she tries to stand up with like a jammed F6 vertebrae. Is that a, is that a vertebrae or tornado? I don't remember which F6, um, S compression. I don't look, I'm not, again, as I've mentioned before, not a doctor, not an expert in a lot of things. All I am, I'm an expert in yammering. That's it. All I do is fucking talk. Uh, and that's what we're doing now. Look at us. Look at the fun we're having. It's been a fun week. I won't lie to you there. It's the last week of July of our Lord 2020, 2020, 2020. Uh, oh, oh, there's the air conditioner. Did I warn you that it might come on? I don't know because I've stopped and started this show like eight times. So I don't know if that's now or later. Uh, but yeah, man, here you go. The, the air conditioning's on because it is 100 degrees in Los Angeles proper where I live uh, on the Internet. That's right. I live in the Internet. Jesus Christ. Look, I've already blown the gig. I blew the whole fucking thing. I pulled the lever, the trap door fell out, and now I'm swinging from a goddamn internet news. I just told you I live on the internet. Now I'm trying to say it's 100 degrees in Los Angeles. Uh, Look, we're having fun, right? That's the important thing. Let's just have fun together because the world is ending, and as it goes ahead and gets pieced up like Trevor Burbick in a Mike Tyson fight, and we all stagger around with that stupid look on our fucking face, uh, let's just realize uh, they're going to nail us no matter what we do, so we might as well have some fun. Toga, 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 toga. Uh, let's have it. Let's have a toga party, folks. Let's get together. Let's have a toga party with masks. Or or let's go the other way. Or, or, or we do this. We have a toga party with no masks because we, uh, we, don't, we don't care about dying. We're interested in dying. That's what we're planning on doing. That's our choice now. We've, we've decided. Because, again, I've been preaching masks for months. And, uh, and it's not helping. I mean, I, and look, some of you, certainly some of the people aren't wearing masks and that's fine. Uh, and by fine, I mean, fucked, but I mean, what the fuck are we going to do about it? Cause again, I'm, it's at the point now where you just want to bonk somebody in the head with a fucking lacrosse stick and go, Hey, fuckhead, no mask, whatever. Uh, but also I go the other route. I'm this guy who says, Hey, you know what? Maybe none of us need to wear masks anymore. Cause the only good thing that's going to happen is the end of the planet. I think we're all rooting for that. Aren't we? Unless we have children and youngsters and kids. Uh, and I have a godson and I have a, his lovely sister who I love and, and I care for. And I have uh, nieces and nephews who I want to stay alive, certainly to save this world. Uh, but at the same time, part of me is like, you know what? Maybe we go maskless. Maybe we just spend a year and a half maskless and see if we can take out the stupid people. Uh, because I'll tell you what, this, this fucking virus isn't for everybody. Only the stupid people. I think we all know that. That's what Prince taught us. Uh, so if you're gonna, if you're gonna call that shrink in Beverly Hills, you know, the one, the one who's a specialist in Tanzania, it's right there on his goddamn door. Uh, folks, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. The masks of are it's still a fight. And I thought of this, I had this epiphany this week and I thought to myself, this is a smart thing. I should share it on Twitter. And then I went, you know what? That's the reason you shouldn't share it on Twitter. Cause it's a smart thing. You dumb fuck. But then I realized it's probably not a smart thing and it's just me jerking off. But who cares? Listen to this. If these fuckheads are out there and they're like, eh, uh, China sent the flu. It's they sent the Chinese virus and fuck them. We might we got to we got to fight China because they fucked us with this Chinese flu. 
And then you're like, all right, yeah, that makes total sense. And like, yeah, man, it's uh, fucking weaponized. It's fucking vicious. They should have told us. And, you know, that it's terrible. And you're like, yeah. And even if we concede that point, let's concede that point. All right, you're right. China made the virus and then sent it our way. They said, hey, going my way, Bing Crosby. And he brought it over here on his shoulders and beat his kids with it. Uh, and then it escaped into the atmosphere or whatever the fuck. So they said, uh, uh, yeah, China. So, so uh, we're, we're conceding the point. China unleashed this virus upon us. And you would now hate China because of it, right? You, you in the streets, you people who are out there going, China flu, ha-ha, <laughs> kung flu, hilarious. Fuck these guys. Then let me ask you this. So China, you, so if you think that China created this virus, which is fine, I hear you on that. I hear what you're saying. Do I agree? Clearly I don't. But yet you're stupid enough to keep talking about that, which is fine. Uh, I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't know why you would be like that, but that's who you are as a person. And again, like I said, for this, for the, uh, the, the purpose of this argument, we're conceding the point that China may have weaponized some germs and sent them to us for the purpose of what? That's what I ask you. The purpose of what? Now, some of you will be like to defeat Donald Trump, which seems dumb, I guess. Maybe I, that seems like that's micro thinking. I think macro thinking, if they sent a germ that is, that can kill people, over to our country, you would consider that like some sort of biological warfare, would you not? You would consider that some sort of uh, sending a germ to ruin us in some way, correct? Yes, I would think so. Uh, so let me ask you this. Uh, in thinking that the Chinese have weaponized this fucking uh, germ to kill us, why is your defense against it refusing to wear the masks that would protect you from the weaponized germ that China sent to defeat the United States. I, 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 I thought of this this week, and I don't know if anybody else has advanced this as a theory, but if you are out there maskless and you're like, fuck China, they sent this fucking germ to kill us, and you're like, okay, cool, whatever the fuck. But now, so China sends the germ to kill us, and we find out that masks kind of prevent it. Maybe, and whether you agree with that or not, look, if I'm conceding your point that China is, has weaponized the germ to kill us via bat soup, then you must concede my point that the masks work to a certain extent. I'm not saying they, they prevent it, but they certainly do keep you safe to a certain extent. So you're conceding that point to me as I concede to you that, uh, that a bat shake started this whole fucking thing. Whatever the fuck, that's fine. Okay? So then I ask you, if I'm conceding your point and you're conceding mine, why? Why would you choose not to wear the mask and die and let China win this fierce battle of biological warfare that they started by feeding a bat minestrone or whatever the fuck, right? Doesn't that make sense? Wouldn't you think to yourself, hey, the Chinese are coming after us with their dreaded Kung flu. We know it's happening. It's flying over here, whether they, they import it uh, via a bat statue or some zoo animal or they send it in a cookie. Who the fuck knows what you think? But you think that they've sent a germ to kill us, so you've decided to not protect yourself from the germ that's been sent to kill us in me, which means you think that, uh, that it's okay. That, that dying would be the best way to do this. I don't understand. That's what I think. And I know you're going to come back at me with the, uh, well, no, no, the, 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 for mortality rate is just, it's like 0.00001 or all right, fine. I'll concede even that point. If you want to bust out a bunch of fucking decimals and queer the whole thing up, that's fine. But if there's even a chance, that you could die from the from the what you've labeled the kung flu china's best bet to come after us with biological warfare if there was even a small infinitesimal chance i think i pronounced that word correctly i may have uh, that even if there was a tiny chance that any of us could die from this weaponized biological germ that the chinese have sent across the ocean blue on the wings of a bat then why wouldn't you do everything you possibly could to fight against it, ergo wearing a mask? Don't you think that if we're in a deadly war with the Chinese and they've just sent the Kung Flu over, they were like, all right, here you go. Like flying monkeys in Wizard of Oz, they gathered up a ton of fuck ton of bats. And they said, fly over and live in Bruce Wayne's basement for a while and then and fly over him when he's a little kid. And eventually you'll spit in somebody's shake. You'll cough up in somebody's drink. As a bat, you can bite some wayward child or you can, or you can spit in their chowder and cause them to get the Kung Flu, which is something you believe then don't you think that the masks, which now we have determined to actually prevent 
not keep you not keep you completely safe, but at least prevent the transmission of the disease. Wouldn't you concede to wear a mask to defeat the very germ that you think has been sent to us by our greatest enemy, the Chinese? I put it to you, Greg. <laughs> That's right, Greg Marmalard. Why don't you answer my question, you fuck? Uh, so there you go. I don't. I thought of that this week, and I thought, you know, if you do really think that China is trying to kill us. Uh, then why wouldn't you wear the mask to prevent China from killing us? Why do you encourage Chinese's, uh, Chinese's, like as if it's a person, China's behavior? I don't understand why you would do that. That makes zero sense to me. I don't understand who you are. And, uh, and, and so I, I'm just, I'm tired of arguing it. I say, you know what? No masks. I'm going to go this route. And it's just for this week. No masks. Uh, and then let's hope that the right people die. Is that what we're going to do? Because that's that's where I've been. I've honestly, that's where I've been since 2016, is I've been rooting for the right people to die in this country. That's basically what my entire existence is. Oh, man, I can't wait to wake up tomorrow and see that the right person died. And I got news for you. Very rarely does the right person die in this country. It's either it's like a, it's David Bowie. It's somebody like that who dies. And you're like, no, dude. Why isn't it one of these fat fucks in a suit who sits in front of Congress and lies? Get those assholes. Bill Barr or whatever the fuck. That lipless motherfucker. You ever see that dude? That dude looks like a toad got three wishes and came to life. What the fuck? He, he really, I, I mean, like, he was like a mean toad. Like, I, like somehow, and like, you know, in Toy Story, the toys are all alive. Uh, I think they are. I didn't see the last one. Didn't they get thrown in a furnace or some bullshit? I don't know. But like in, in a kid's movie, when animals come to life and then, and then like a, uh, like in Big, when uh, Tom Hanks was uh, like he became a little kid or, uh, or he's a little kid who wanted to be a big kid or whatever the fuck or a big man. Well, that's like Bill Barr is like in a in a in a movie where a toad finds a, a cursed idol and, and decides, you know what? I'm tired of being a toad and everybody's been shitting on me the whole time, calling me ugly. I want to be a human. But then he becomes a human and he doesn't realize that he looks just like the 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 fucking uh, Chet from Weird Science after Kelly LeBrock turned him into that goddamn goosebump monster or whatever the fuck he was uh, here. And, and that's what Bill Barr looks like in real life. So as a toad, he was like, hey, man, I want to totally be a human. So then he becomes a human and he looks just like a fucking toad in a suit. And it's like, ah, oh, he's so he's pissed. He literally, you know what Bill Barr looks like? This is totally true. It looks like uh, somebody zapped Jerry Krause from the bulls with a growth ray. And he grew up and out like literally he, he not only did he get taller, but he also got fatter and wider. He just he looks like the monster from fucking uh, uh, weird science. And so that dude goes and he lies and he's fucking. And I read something that this week where somebody's like uh, Trump is. And again, this is always such fucking bullshit where they're like President Fuckneck is incapacitated. So he's not making any of the decisions. Bill Barr is the de facto president of the uh, of the country now, which made me think of the end of seven where he's like, John Doe is in charge. John Doe is in charge. Uh, Bill Barr is in charge. Bill Barr is in charge. Uh, what's in the box, Bill Barr? Oh, look, it's the head of Lady Justice. Oh, look at me making the worst possible hacky political cartoon thing I could possibly do. It was the head of Lady Justice and her scales were used to tie the box. Shut the fuck up. Um... I don't know, man. I, I don't. So, so again, like I said, we, we root for death. I have been at least since 2016. I wake up waiting for the right people to die and they never do. Never. Mitch, Mitch McConnell will not die. These fuckheads will not die. I don't I don't know what to do. How do we hasten it? Is there a witch doctor that we can get? Uh, is there a country we can have to send a germ over on the wings of a rodent? Oh, wait, what the hell? Have I gone ahead and revealed everything of have I was I in cahoots with the Chinese? Perhaps. Uh, oh, and I'll t- I will tell you this, though. Once I saw my doctor, uh, I did have him look at my Chinese cahoots. Oh, dude, I have been it's quarantine's been very long. And I got to tell you, I have I have pain in my Chinese cahoots like I never had before. Uh, I'm going to drink some water because my lips are sticking together. But I have to tell you that because if there's dead air, I figure you'll turn out <laughs> like Mike stopped talking for three seconds. We got to get the fuck out of here. Uh, the wrong people are dying. I don't understand what's happening in this country. It's just, it's, uh, it's not enough. And and, and again, now there's a fucking germ. It's, it's on a fucking silver platter to kill these fat old fucks. Why aren't they dying? Trust me. I'm a fat old fuck. I can't believe I'm, I'm not dead yet. If I hadn't just hermetically sealed myself into my goddamn apartment, like fucking shrink wrapped goddamn baloney, I think I'd be dead by now. 
So that's what I do. I'm terrified to go outside. Eh, it seems like strong. I'm not terrified. I go to the store. I shop. I do whatever the fuck. Um, but at the same fucking time, I, I don't invite any bad things because because you know why? Because I'm the type of dude the bad things will happen to. That's what I mean. I'm not rich in a linen suit or whatever the fuck or tweed or any of that bullshit. Uh, I, I, I'm just a normal dude. So if I, I'm in shorts, I'm going to die. If you're in shorts, the germ will get you. If you're wearing a suit, maybe suits, maybe suits are the fucking, that's what you have to wear to avoid dying from this thing. I don't fucking know, man. And then, and then th- this whole place is ending and I don't know what to do. Like I told you, I want to go to Canada. I can't get out of this country. I want to go to Ireland. I'm not sure what's happening. It's a fucking earthquake here this week. Did you know that? I'm sure you did. There was an earthquake in Los Angeles and, uh, and I've been on the air during earthquakes. All right. So, and usually you're just like, well, all right, we're having an earthquake and it's kind of, you know, just kind of a rumble. You're like, all right, well, I can deal with this because I've had them before and I've gotten through them before and that's that. But, uh, I, so you just sit there. I, here's what. All right. So this has happened. It was like 430 in the morning the other day and I'm at the desk and, uh, and it starts to rumble. Like all of a sudden you can you can hear it coming sometimes. And I did. And then all of a sudden you start moving and you're shaking your chair. And I'm like, oh, OK, well, this is interesting. And it was about five seconds of rolling. All right. And then out of fucking nowhere, like a fucking jolt. This fucking jolt that it felt like I was I was in an etch a sketch getting shaken up and down. You know what I mean? You know you do that to erase the picture, and I felt, I mean I, I started to bounce up and down in my fucking chair. And uh, here's something I did that I haven't done for the past like five earthquakes that I've been in. Uh, I got out of my chair. That's right, because uh, shit got knocked off of my shelves in my house. My framed photographs fell off. I have uh, I have framed photographs on a few shelves, and there's uh, there's a like a low bookcase in my where I watch TV it's just under the TV I don't watch much TV but the, under the TV there's some there and they got knocked they all got knocked to the ground along with some scented candles that I have because there's a good chance I'm uh, I'm uh, a guru of some sort perhaps I'm a yogi perhaps I'm doing some sort of meditation um, so I'm, I mean when the jolt hit I was just like what the fuck man and it actually made me get out of my chair and kind of make my way over to the uh to the doorway but by the time i got to the doorway it was done it had stopped and uh and i'm then you're standing there you know what i mean and you're like in the distance you can hear a car alarm because there's a car alarm that's gone off and i w- i went outside and my neighbors started to drift out and i looked up up at the balcony and my neighbor oscar was already out there smoking and uh i look up at him and he goes he's like hey mike and i go that's a good one huh and he goes oh yeah you know i was sleeping it woke me right up because he's Swedish, uh, he, but but I, where he's Swiss, he's Swiss. So I don't know. I don't. Know, I can't do a Swiss accent. But he sounds like he's German. That's what he sounds like. But uh, he's Swiss. Uh, he's the same guy, by the way. I should tell you. You know, I've talked. I talked about how uh, I'm not going to confront anybody in the mask thing anymore. Where I'm just like, whatever the fuck. Um, well, that includes at my house because I again, nobody in my building wears the mask except for the guy with a kid. Him and his wife wear them because they're young and smart. Uh, but Oscar is, you know, he's fucking 65 or whatever the fuck. And, and I'm sure he just feels like, ah, you know what? I've been on this planet long enough. Come for me, germ. I dare you. I defy you. Oscar will probably shoot it um, because he did the other day. I, I, he was coming home and I was leaving and I walked out and he was going. So we have to share. There's a tiny uh, hallway that we would have had to share. I would have had to walk past him. So I, I went to go down and he was coming in the gate. So I actually waited. And he's like, hey, Mike. And I go, hey, Oscar. And uh, he comes walking down and I backed up. And he's like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm sorry, I don't have my mask. It's in the car. And he goes, oh, fuck your mask. And uh, walked off. <laughs> and I was like, all right, man. I guess, uh, I guess I know who another hoaxer in my building is or who, uh, who believes it's a hoax. Um, because I told you my, uh, my neighbor Lou does not have a mask on. I think he might teach his classes with a mask, but he doesn't wear a mask around here. Now, I will tell you this. I don't wear a mask either like to check the mail or to go to the car. So, I mean, maybe I'm only seeing these people doing that, but there are people sitting out at the pool all the time and they also don't wear masks. Um, They'll sit out and drink at night or they'll do whatever the fuck that they're doing and they'll be, and they are, they are maskless, which is fine. I suppose. I don't know. I, because again, it's just terrible. Everything has gone to hell and there's no, they always say the toothpaste is out of the tube. I get news for you. We, We don't even have a tube. Just a pile of fucking toothpaste dropped on us from the fucking sky. And everybody's just like, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, it's no problem. Everything's good. 
Uh, so I went outside because of the earthquake. And people started to drift out of their apartments. And uh, there's a, there's two clocks outside that are on the building. One's like right by the... If you have, we have a pool, and it has... Uh, you know the things with the, where you clean the pool? It's got the net and the long like metal post and uh, a life jacket, I think, at some point. And then there's a clock right above that. Well, that fell off and fucking smashed. And then there was another block on the opposite side that also fell off and smashed. And I was like, oh, time itself has been destroyed by this earthquake. Uh, but it was a good jolt, man. And then it also came in. Uh, we had another one about 15 minutes later. I was texting with Pat. And then we got another one about an hour after that. And this is the first time I've had three quakes in a chain. I've been in two quakes in a chain, then a bunch of aftershocks. But this is the first time I had three actual, like, shaking quakes in a chain and we had like fucking 50 aftershocks too or something like that and i was like jesus fucking christ man i it just it's and it's it, and it, you sit there and it hits and you don't have time to really go what the and then when it's over you just go yeah of course i mean that makes complete sense why wouldn't we have a giant fucking earthquake and this wasn't an earthquake I, you're you know uh, this wasn't a giant one but all it was was like it got your attention because it made you realize that, you know, because you're like, oh, man, things are happening and oh, the, the, this earth and masks and there's a virus and what the fuck is going on. And then that earthquake happens. and You're like, oh, yeah, you know what? Totally forgot about that. Yeah, the planet could murder us. That could happen at any goddamn time. I wish I hadn't been made aware of that. Good for the planet for stepping up and making sure that we realized it was still fucking boss. <laughs> by sending a hurricane to Texas and an earthquake to visit me because it was like, I think, I think the earth was kind of like, Hey, these motherfuckers forgot about me. You can't forget about Dre. You can't forget about Dre at all. So then the earth went, guess what? Motherfuckers, here you go. And it dropped, um, 50 aftershocks and three real quakes in my goddamn lap. and made me just go, all right, well, that's a thing. Cause who the fuck knows anymore? I don't know. I don't know what to enjoy. I don't know what to like. Hockey is back. I think, I don't know. They might have shut it down. Now I'm talking to you guys. Who knows what's happening? Basketball is back for now until somebody else goes to a strip club or some other germ happens. I don't I can't tell you. Baseball is in trouble. The Phillies, you know, the, the Marlins tested positive last week. And now the Phillies, now the Cardinals, too. And some Brewers are quitting. And I, I don't. And now it's funny. Here's another thing. I always talked about how they're trying to blame the players for this kind of thing. And, and the league is trying to do it. They're like, well, if the players would just follow the protocols, it's like, oh, really? They're still getting on planes and going to fucking stadiums. And there's still dudes in all these different places, motherfucker. Don't pretend like there's because baseball came back with no fucking plan. No plan. Baseball's plan basically was it was like their government's plan. They were like, well, you know what? Um, it'll probably go away. I, we have a feeling that the germ will go away and our players, because they're young and strong and healthy, will go ahead and be fine. Oh, really? Here's a story that just came out this week. I'm sure you may have seen it. Uh, and look, I, uh, I can't even believe I'm fucking saying this sentence out loud. Some parents sent their kids to camp. Fucking camp. What are you doing? Do you just want, I mean, if, if you're tired of being a parent, that's fine. This is easier than putting them in a sack and throwing them in the ocean. I understand that. Uh, but, but sending them to camp, don't even pretend like you thought it was a good idea. I don't give a fuck who told you or who you listened to. Or This was just parents who were like, man, you know what? You've been homeschooling since fucking March. Get the fuck out of this house. Go play Red Rover with a bunch more kids and get sick could you do that for us and but if you're gonna get sick because you probably are because you're a fucking kid and you've just been i can't i can't check your homework anymore i can't teach you anymore about the dewey decimal system go die in a square dancing circle please do me a favor go do a hike with everybody and learn about fucking whittling and catch some lightning bugs in a jar and pick some cattails and oh yeah by the way everybody get the germ on everybody else and all of you fucking perish who the fuck sends their kid to goddamn camp i can't even imagine that they're going to send people to school because they keep talking about that and we've talked about this ad nauseum because that's all there's to fucking talk about unfortunately but they sent kids to camp and guess what happened? Guess what? Oh, Brady, well, you know what? I don't even have to say guess what happened because I think, you know, the very fact that I brought it up indicates to you exactly what fucking happened because first of all, all of the camp counselors and workers wore masks. All of the children were allowed to not wear masks because I don't know if you've heard, but there are a lot of stupid people who say, oh yeah, kids can't get it. Oh, oh, really? 
kids can't get it? Well, let me direct your attention right over here to Camp Motherfucking 2020 version of Crystal Lake. And Jason the Germ showed up and ch- 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 <laughs> the fuck out of these kids. And uh, like like 51% of the seven to nine year olds got it. Like, I, look, I don't know the numbers off the top of my fucking head, but all the kids got it. All of them at the camp got it. Because guess what? Apparently, sleeping in log cabins and jerking off with your fellow kids and reading comic books and sneezing and uh, and archery and whatever other fucking thing, going in the mess hall and singing songs together, all of that shit will lead you to get the pandemic germ deep into your lungs because you know what? It doesn't matter if you're a fucking kid. Don't you fucking understand, you fucking rats? How dare you throw these kids in the path? And I understand if you're sick of your kid, that makes sense. Because this, this sounds like some Hitchcock bullshit where you're like, uh, what, I, I thought the camp was safe. Like their kids all die and they're like, oh, I'm so sad. <laughs> We've got to turn that room into a guest room. Oh, I can't believe I've lost my child. I Hey, we're going to save a lot on tuition, aren't we? Oh, I seem to have lost my baby in a germacost at a panic pad fucking camp. Shut up. Shut up. You knew you, you knew you knew it was going to fucking happen and you sent him anyway. But we're supposed to believe that people are and and are they're just like, yeah, no, I, I believed that they weren't going to get it because kids and oh, and also the Internet and and people say, fuck, people say, fuck, people say, as I've said before, this planet's going to eat itself. Not even this planet, this country, certainly all the QAnon ass fucks, all the non anti vaxxers. You know, I still see people who say that even even if there is a vaccine that's created for this medicine, that they're not going to take it. I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, no, even if they get a coronavirus vaccine, I'm not going to take it because I know there's a microchip and they want to fucking they want to follow me all over. Who the fuck wants to follow you all over? You live in Fond du Lac. Nobody gives a fuck that you went for beer and fucked. Nobody cares about putting a microchip in you. No, it's the it's the beast. This is it. It's the marking of people. It's the beast. And then we so what for what? Nobody's putting microchips in you. You think Bill Gates, multi, multi billionaire, gives a flying fuck what Roger in fucking Eau Claire is doing with his time? Is he sitting in his house and like beep, beep, beep? Hold on, that's the Roger alert. Let's see what uh, he's he's getting cheese curds again. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. Uh, that Roger, I'll tell you what, he's he's always a bundle of surprises running out for six packs and cheese curds all the goddamn time. Do you think do you think it's just part of Maybe Bill Gates has you in a Deadpool and he's trying to track your beer and cheese curd intake up there in fucking Eau Claire, Roger. Is that what it is? Because Bill Gates doesn't give a flying fuck what any of you people are doing with your lives. They never are able to explain the end game. Oh, yeah. No, no, they're, they're, they're implanting microchips in you with the vaccine so they can track your movements. Really? So let me ask you this. Do you happen to have a cell phone? Well, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? It means they know where you are at all fucking times on your cell phone, you fucking idiot. Any app you've downloaded, every, and no matter, and no, I don't give a fuck if you've gone into settings and turned them all off, whatever the fuck, somehow someone knows where you are at all fucking times. And nothing has happened up to this point, has it? Nobody's tracked you down and gone, oh, we've got to take that guy out. You're, you are, no, listen, I don't care how important you think you are in Edna, Oklahoma, you are not the target of international assassins. Good thinking that somehow at some point you would be a John Wick character, but instead, oh, get this, you're still a guy in an orange vest waving at people and making them drive slow while the better construction workers actually get to drive the big machines and pour the cement. You weren't even good enough to drive the steamroller. Believe me, the federal government doesn't care about what the fuck you're doing with your goddamn life. You're not about to become... Uh, someone who gets a purpose. You're not about to be some guy who's like, oh, here we go. That guy stomped my dog. I'd better go get my private cache of amazing guns and go to the Continental and talk to the guy from Deadwood. Nope, not happening. No, instead, you're going to work at your dead end job for 45 hours that week. And you're going to be so happy. You got that five hours of overtime because that is going to pay for your weekend out. And what is your weekend out? Well, you and the boys are going out to the bar to drink and then you're going to get so fucking soused and you're going to bother women. And then you're going to go home and sleep and then you're going to wake up on Saturday and go, Oh, what do I want to do today? Do I want to have my dog killed by international Russian burglars or whatever the fuck? So I can go ahead and exact my revenge or, or do I want to sit on my couch and watch the Oklahoma state couch? 
Cowboys. Who knows? What could it be? Although these days you can't even sit on your couch and watch the Oklahoma State Cowboys. I don't get it, dude. I don't understand it. There's no, there's never an arbitrary answer for the, the you know, oh yeah, no, they're putting chips in you. They want to go to find out where you go. Really? Well, why? Oh, well, because that's, you know, that's what Bill Gates does. What, is that what Bill Gates does? He puts chips in you? Is that what it is? I thought he made operating systems that instantly became obsolete later on. Although I'm joking. I have a Windows machine. Don't fucking yell at me. I don't want to hear that. That's, you know what's funny? I would rather piss off the anti-vaxxers and the non-masksers <laughs> than, than the fucking Apple versus Microsoft people. I don't want to have that fucking conversation. I have an Apple laptop. I got an iPhone. I'm happy with it. And you, you know what? If you want to be a Windows person, go ahead. And I don't give, give be anything you want to be, except a flat earther. Don't be that fuckhead or an anti-vaxxer or any of these people. Please, please, please. Don't be baseball telling me that everything's going fine and then blaming the players because one of them went out to get a fucking sandwich or whatever the fuck and he might have met somebody who had the germ and then he brought it home. Because, look, the very fact that there is a pandemic that can be spread from person to person that quickly should indicate to you that, you know what? You're going to get it. You can't prevent it. You can't be those one of those idiots who's like, oh, yeah, no, everything's going to be fine if you just stay in your hotel all the time. There's a way to mitigate it. But if you've got 25 people in a clubhouse and then riding on a bus together, someone's going to fucking get it. Hockey and basketball are doing a bubble. And I I don't know. I guess it's safe. I think they've only had like 10 hockey players and, and like 15 NBA players so far. But all it's going to take is for one dude to get it, and then everybody's going to get fucking whacked. And again, I said last week, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of, I don't want to be a nanny state guy. You want to play basketball? I want to watch. You want to put on fights? I can't wait to see them. You want to have fucking hockey? I'm in. Baseball? Absolutely. Can't wait. I hope nothing bad happens. But as a, a rational thinking human being, I think, uh, you know, I'm thinking that probably something bad is going to happen at some point, as indicated by what's going on in baseball right fucking now and believe me i don't even want to talk about fucking football can you imagine that can you imagine because these dudes these dudes are fucking banging into one another the whole fucking time and i'll watch dude again i'm a mercenary i'm fucking stupid i don't care i'm not i'm not like oh we must protect the players at all costs yeah i'd like the players to be safe uh but if they're going to get paid and they decide they want to play that's totally fine i got no issue with that it's fucking america you want to go ahead and opt out too you want to stay home that's cool too i don't care but anybody who decides to play, I'll watch. Anybody who decides to fight, I'm in. I feel bad for college football players because they don't get a fucking thing out of this. Dude, I read a thing today that just, I mean, again, maybe we, you know, remember I, I joked and I said no more masks? No more reading. I can't read anymore. There can't be, no, nobody else tell me what's going to happen in the world. Keep me, I want to be blithely ignorant to everything that's going on so I don't have to see it coming down the pike. I want to be constantly gobsmacked. That's what I want to be. I don't want to know about these terrible things that might come and then when they finally do come, I got to go, shit, I've been waiting on this. It's like I talked about, I hate tornado warnings. For four hours, you're in your house going, fuck, there might be a tornado. Well, like these dudes are telling me about the collapse of the American economy and I'm like, oh man, I can't deal with this. I don't want to know that this is coming even though I know that it's coming. I'm not stupid. If you're a thinking human being, you realize what the fuck is happening these motherfuckers are are there this is this is full-on war on the poor and middle class they don't give a fuck go back to work fuck you we're taking your your unemployment away fuck you we don't we don't care dudes were like hey you know if it's if it's that rough you should take out a margin loan against your 401k oh really well talk to the guy at subway do me a favor go talk to the sandwich artist and talk to him about his fucking margin loan that he could take against fucking baloney let him do that hey, i'm gonna take a margin loan against these uh, condiments is that possible can i take a margin loan against these fucking otis spunkmeyers that we got in a case down here they have no idea how real people live none they have no idea what, pe- what poor people have to do. They have no idea what middle class people have to do. They have no idea what check to check people have to do. They've encouraged spending. They've encouraged this. They're always like, keep the economy running. Go out and buy something. You got to buy something. Keep the economy. Keep the engine rolling. You're the, you're the oil in the economy of the, the engine or whatever. the. F- and it's like, no, nah, dude, uh, maybe we hoard all of our money because you don't give a fuck about us. And the next time a fucking germ comes, you decide not to help anybody out. Then we can hunker down and not worry about it and actually be able to buy soup to live on. Is that okay? I mean, I, I've, I've gone through moments here where I've been like, you know, people have been very kind to me and they send me money or whatever the fuck. And I'm like, 
well, you know what? I want to, I, I might want to buy something. Like, should I get this? Or I've got a little extra cash. And, and then I'm like, eh, fuck you, man. Cause you know what? In a year, you're not going to have any extra cash in a year. You, you're going to say to yourself, you know, am I going to, am I going to eat those fucking, those Jordans that I bought? You know what I mean? It's like, fuck, you can't do that shit. But they have no concept of what it means to live like a real person because they have trust funds and fathers and, and rich friends and, and safety net after safety net after safety net. And I am, like I said, I'm, I'm a fucking spider in the, in the internet. That's me. I'm, I'm, I'm crawling around trying to find a fucking crumb just like you guys are. We all are. Everybody's just trying to stay afloat. Everybody has these decisions where they're like, all right, man, do I put my kids in fucking school or do I keep them home or do I send them to camp to die? Maybe that that's, you know what? I, your, your first tip should have been when it was camp Walla Walla Auschwitz. I think that should have been the thing that maybe made you go, you know what? Maybe you don't send the kids over there. Cause you know what? Not a, not a real good track record of people coming back from vacationing at camp Walla Walla Auschwitz, you fucking dummies, but they don't care. They just did it. Uh, and, and people are just freaking out going, Oh, we, we never saw this happening. You know, kids don't get it or whatever. It's like you fucking idiots. How dare you send your kid to Walla Walla Auschwitz camp Walla Walla Auschwitz. Uh, God, I'm, I, you know what? Fuck. Let me tell you something. I'm fucking funny. I don't care. You want to fight with me? Go ahead. That's fine. The fucking unemployment bullshit ends. They don't extend it. They go. They 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 leave rather than figure it out. Democrats have had a fucking thing on the table for three months. Republicans are like, oh no, we don't want to incentivize people to not work by giving them this money. Well, then then make bosses pay people more to go to work. I, I mean, shouldn't that be a thing too? And then you see these bills where they're like, they <laughs> they approve the Republicans. They have their offer, and it's supposedly look. This is supposed to be helping people and small businesses get through a pandemic. And then they're they're building a new FBI building with seven hundred and eighty five million dollars of this of this bailout package. And then from what I heard again, I don't know who the fuck knows what's true and what isn't because the goddamn Internet is a huge fucking wood chipper. But it said that one of the reasons that they want to put this FBI building on this corner is because it's in the same neighborhood as a Trump hotel and a hotel company was looking at buying this space and erecting hotels that would a hotel that would co- compete with Trump's. So he wants to put the FBI building there so the hotel people don't get the building to compete with him. <laughs> what the hell? And again, this is shit nobody blinks at anymore because this fuckhead has turned the country into into the season three of The Sopranos. He's just banging shit out. He doesn't care, and nobody cares anymore. And he just gets increasingly stupid and everybody's just like, yeah, no problem. Yeah, it's okay. It's totally fine. No, he's, he's just, he's just going to kill the post office. You remember the post office, don't you? The thing we started in this country with men on fucking horseback so we could build a society. Remember that? Yeah. Well, now that's gone. Cause this motherfucker is going to go ahead and kill it because he thinks it's against, uh, it's, it's not going to help him in the election. So he's going to wipe out the post office. You remember the post office, the miracle where you could put a sticker on a piece of white paper and in two days it would travel across the country for 50 cents. Remember that? Yeah. He's going to destroy it because it's not convenient for him anymore. Jesus fuck. And again, it's that shit where it just disappears. People are like, yeah, no, he, the head, the new postmaster general is a guy who has, he's got like $50 million invested in competitors with the post office and you put him in charge of the post office. That's fucking ridiculous. That's like hiring a wolf to guard your chickens. And he also owns two Kentucky fried chicken franchises, which don't ask me why they're in business with a wolf. It seems strange, but at the same time, I'm going to stand behind this fucking analogy and you can't get me off of it. I'm going to fucking root myself to the ground on it and take you on bronze statue style. You can't fucking move me off this. (laughs) But again, I see the shit and I just, I laugh. I'm laughing at it now because it's all so stupid. Because if you don't laugh, you're just going to be like, oh, man, uh, world's ending still, right? Isn't that suck? I hate that the world is ending. I wish the world wasn't still ending. When will the world stop ending? God damn it. I don't fucking understand it. But people just let the shit roll. They let the shit fucking roll. 
Democrats let it roll. They didn't make anybody stay and do the fucking bailout. They made them, they let them go home for a weekend. Yeah, no, you should go home for a weekend. That's good. You guys have had a long week of looking like turtles and fucking around, you fucking idiots. You've, you've gone ahead and bailed out an FBI building. And also, dude, this is totally fucking true. And again, I just think this is hilarious. Uh, you know, the, 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 he keeps giving these fucking things. He keeps talking about hydroxy, whatever the fuck. He keeps talking about people should go ahead and take this. So now... It turns out that he might have invested in companies that that are like building hydroxy, whatever the fuck. I don't know. It's something like that. Trump's got money in it or his kids do or nobody knows anymore because the whole fucking company, the whole company, country company, same fucking thing is a is a it's a pyramid scheme at this fucking point. So he fucking in the new bill, not only the fucking FBI building and dumb shit where they're buying tanks for people and whatever the fuck, but there is now, there's also, they gave, guess who they gave money to? Now, brace yourselves for this. I'm sure you've heard it. They gave $760 million to Kodak. Remember Kodak? Polaroids, Kodak, cameras. Yeah. Polaroids, which are now nostalgia and not necessary for anybody. Literally just they're, they're used by cute photographers who want a different look. I mean, no, you, you got a fucking camera on your phone. Everybody's got a camera at their fucking fingertips all day. So Kodak's dead. They're fucking dead. The only, the only relevance Kodak has is in the front half of a Paul Simon song. That's it from now on. And I don't even know how relevant that is, motherfuckers. But sure enough, Kodak is still around and, uh, and film is dead. Which, you know, if, if Egon Spangler told us it was print, but I'm here to tell you it's film. Mike Spangler's going to jump on that bandwagon. And, uh, and so Kodak, is it, they don't know what the fuck to do. So they pivot. Here's what Kodak does. They pivot from Polaroids to now they're going to get in to the prescription drugs business. Uh, you know, these people who invented a way to push a button and create a uh, an image of yourself on whatever the fuck sticky paper came flying out of the machine they invented. Now they're going to fucking make pills. They're going to invent pills. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. So they get $760 million. And then it turns out that, uh, oh, two days before they get this money or it's announced, they haven't gotten it yet, by the way, this hasn't gone through. It hasn't passed, but it turns out that two days before, uh, this happened, their stock price went through the fucking roof because these fucking crooks, who, who you know who I'm talking about, these fucking jagoffs, these crooks, uh, called their friends and said, hey, yeah, we're going to give Kodak like $760 million because he's going to make pills and shit. And everybody bought it. Kodak, which was just, which was moribund. It was, it was dead in the water because nobody has Polaroids in film anymore. But now that they're going to make drugs, everybody buys their shit on Monday. And then uh, Tuesday announced, oh, by the way, I don't know if you're aware of this. Uh, Kodak is going to be making pills now. And then, uh, of course, already the stock's gone through the roof because everybody knew on fucking Monday because these crooks called one another. Horrible. Horrible. And, uh, and then it turned out, and brace yourselves for this because this is fine. And you know this. You know this is true. And I saw this and I just started laughing. Guess what? Guess what drug Kodak is going to make? Guess what drug is uh, Kodak is making like they're starting? This is what their focus is going to be on. All right, are you ready for it? I'm sure you're way ahead of me. Hydroxy, whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah, Kodak, who's, who's obsolete. They're making an obsolete uh, photography thing. They're making obsolete film, obsolete Polaroids, all this shit. Now they're going to make a malaria drug that's obsolete to treat the pandemic but yet, for some reason, people still think it's fine because a grown man who wears more makeup than the four members of KISS combined told them it would work. And they believe him. They believe him because he at one time he, he fired Bob Saget from a game show. And everybody said, yeah, that's the guy. That's who we want to get our medical advice from. And, and you, you can only laugh. That's all you can do is point and laugh at this country and point and laugh at these people and point and, and all that bullshit of, hey, man, I'm just asking questions or why, what, what do you got to lose? What do you got to lose? That's our, that's our fucking motto. It used to be said as you're tired, you're poor, you're huddled masses yearning to be free. And now it's, what do you got to lose? And I mean, Jesus fucking Christ, what a mess. And it's, and I laugh, I laugh. Because I, you know, like I said, I want to leave. I'd love to go. But at the same time, I, I, you know, I do like America. I like it here. I don't like the government, all that bullshit. But I like, 
I, I like fucking the food here and sports, and I know the roads. You know what I mean? <laughs> I get to drive on the right side. That's fine. Like, Canada's closed. Canada's like America light. That's fine. I can go there and survive there. I don't have to learn any French. There's enough fucking American people there, or English, or whatever the fuck. But, man, uh, any other place would be kind of a coin flip, because you're driving on the wrong side of the road, and who the fuck knows, and do I like borscht and whatever. I don't want to fucking go anywhere, but you know what? I get a feeling I'm not going to have to worry about going anywhere because this fucking thing's going to fall apart anyway. I, I, I don't want to go anywhere by choice. Well, I might have to just flee. I mean, if I have to flee, that's different. I could totally flee a place. I can flee. I got that down. I got that skill happening. You think I can't flee? Watch me. I'll flee like a motherfucker. I'll flee better than any of you fuckers. Kodak is making fucking hydroxy whatever the fuck. What a joke. Uh, what's he going to do now? He's going to hire the Betamax people to get on it, too. They're going to go ahead and make a fucking drug. <laughs> That's, why not? Why not get, yeah, the VHS people, whoever the fuck. Uh, uh, Memorex, the guys who used to make fucking cassette tapes. Let's get them going ahead and trying to, anybody. At this point, he's like, ah, fuck, we need anybody. Anybody who can do this, anybody who can make a drug, I'll fucking call them. Are they, you got stocks that are dying? I'll buy them and we'll give you some cash. Unreal. I don't, I don't understand it. And I, I, you know, it was my birthday this week. I had a great week. Uh, I didn't have a great week, but I had a good week. I had a week. I didn't die. That's all that matters in this country anymore. As long as you don't fucking die, you're having a good week. But I'm losing baseball. I don't, I, again, I had the hockey, basketball. I don't know if there's, we're losing the post office. Again, like these weird things. And and then you're like, everybody, there are these people are like, oh my God, I can't wait till November so we can get rid of this guy. You're not getting rid of this fucking guy ever, ever. Because, I, I mean, even if he loses in November, it doesn't fucking matter. And then, and then fucking Biden, now they're talking about his vice president, who he's going to pick. And there was like, everybody's like, Kamala Harris should be the pick. And everybody's like, no, she was mean to him at a debate. What? That's, really? We're, that's why we're not going to take her? Let her? Let's pick her, and then she can be mean to those guys for once. Wouldn't you want the mean person on your team? And then they named this, there was some woman named Karen Bass. And I'm like, I don't know who the fuck Karen Bass is. I don't know anything about her. But this is, this is where this fucking country is. Everybody's like, what about Karen Bass? She'd be pretty good. And then out of nowhere, because I don't know who fucking Karen Bass is. It might not have been out of nowhere. Maybe this is in plain sight all the fucking time. But it turns out, like 10 years ago, Karen Bass uh, spoke at a Scientology conference and welcomed them and thanked them and talked how great Scientology was. You're going to make her the vice president? So then she has to put out a statement where she's like, oh, yeah, no, there wasn't as much stuff about Scientology 10 years ago. And then so then everybody's like, oh, no, 2008, there was this, 2006, there was this, 2004, and... and and then she doesn't answer it because, again, you don't have to answer anything anymore in this country. If you're rich or, or in public office, you can just blow it off. There's a, there's a fucking hillbilly in Texas. That, uh, uh, what's his name? Louis fucking Gompers. What, is that his name? Louis fucking uh, Gomert. There it is, Gomert. Louis Gomert. He's a... Uh, <laughs> he's, got, he's got the German. Now he's going to take hydroxy, whatever the fuck. And and then he's not going to die either. But he gets to be stupid, and we got to watch him. All these people are stupid. Let's just fucking, let's just buy pitchforks. Can we do that? Let's organize and buy pitchforks. Are you with me? Can we just go ahead and take these people out? Fuck, I don't even need a guillotine. Uh, I wouldn't know how to operate a guillotine. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about at this point. <laughs> They're killing TikTok. In addition to the fucking post office, he's mad at an app. <laughs> fucking, do we do we live in the stupidest world you've ever heard of? We must. This is the dumbest fucking world I've ever been involved in. I never wanted to care. This shit never meant anything to me. I never wanted to worry about it. And I, I and then this week, you know, and then and then Fauci and the scarf. We used to be like the good guys, but now they're trying to go after Fauci. And it turns out the scarf is bad. Like the scarf might have been telling them to open up early too. She might have been somebody that we didn't know. She was she was a Trojan horse for bad news, and she was on Trump's side and and telling I don't I don't. It's just so fucking overwhelming, and and I I want nothing to do with any of it, man. Fucking Fauci in the scarf, and then also it, that's another thing. <laughs> Fauci in the scarf, right? But then he's mad at Fauci, so he talks a bunch of shit about Fauci, and then he puts out this ridiculous fucking this new doctor. Like he retweets this new doctor. Who, who talked about ovarian cysts are caused by demon sperm? And, and you think I'm making that up. I'm sure you saw it if you saw the news, but that's totally real. 
And, and Trump was like, yeah, no, she's got a lot of great things to say. Really? She talked about alien DNA and lizard people and demon sperm and fucking what the fuck? And we used to live in a place where shit like that would happen and people would just go, yeah, this is the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. Or if you had a president who talked like that, you'd be like, get him the fuck out of there. What is going on? But now, I understand power. I understand, like, Republicans want to stay in power or whatever. Not even Republicans, just the, just the assholes who are doing this. They want to stay in power, so they back this fucking guy up, whatever. But then even worse is the people who believe it, like the real people. That's the people who drive me crazy. All of a sudden, they rally to the side of demon sperm because they're like, oh, yeah, no, he says it's cool. It's fine. No, he, I, why, don't, why not try demon sperm? I, I mean, it's, it's, it's just as good as hydroxy, whatever the fuck, right? Doesn't demon sperm cure malaria? I don't fucking know. I don't know, man. I haven't used any demon sperm any, anytime soon. Jesus, I don't. It's all so stupid, and it won't stop being stupid. That's the worst part. It will not stop being stupid, and I don't know what the fuck to do about it. Nothing. There's nothing you can do. Except come here and do a fucking show where I yammer about it and talk about it over and over about what the fuck is happening. Fucking football is going to be ridiculous, man. And I, like I said, I don't know if I've even finished that thought. I read a thing today where they were talking about in college football. You know, those guys didn't even get fucking paid. But if they don't play college football, colleges might close down because they make so much money from football, they won't be able to pay like for buildings and for professors and shit like that. And so universities may shut down with no football. And, and just think of that statement. Think of that alone. You, you're, how could you, I, we, shouldn't the school be open and, and football's like maybe a thing, but instead without football, the school doesn't exist. And then what? There, there aren't going to be enough McDonald's in this country for these people to get jobs at. What the fuck is happening? And, and it just keeps happening and it won't stop happening. It's just, it's. It's just going to keep coming and coming and getting stupider and stupider. And I and I don't, like I said, then the TikTok thing happened and they're like, yeah, no, there's, oh, you don't understand. Uh, you know, people are like, he's banning TikTok because they were mean to him um, or whatever the fuck. And they, you know, they made his rally a failure. <laughs> and then, then they're like, no, it's because that one comedian is on TikTok and she makes fun of him all the time. And I'm like, all right, I don't know if that's true. And then everybody's like, no, no, you don't understand. This is a high-level negotiating ploy because Facebook is opening up a TikTok rival. And so this is Trump's way of doing Zuckerberg a favor because Zuckerberg is there. And I'm just like, oh, my God, Jesus, stop. Stop. Leave me the fuck alone. I don't, I don't want to know any of this. I don't want to know that this is what's happening or what could have happened. I don't want to know the possibilities of it. I don't need to go any, any deeper than surface level on the fact that, hey, the American president wants to shut down an app that has people doing ridiculous Fortnite dances on it because reasons. That's it. That's all I care about. That's how stupid he is. And I'm willing to accept that. But then they're like, oh, no, there's a thing and it's a negotiation. And I don't. Jesus Christ. I think I, I, I think I speak for all of us. Leave me alone. You guys can get me at Mike and Mike Schmidt com. You guys can be my friend at Facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can follow me at Twitter.com slash the 40 year old boy. Uh, I'm also at Instagram and Snapchat at Mike four zero Y O B. And also for the time being until he drops a fucking hammer, uh, I am available at uh, TikTok as well. I believe I'm Mike four O Y O B on there four zero Y O B. Find me, please friend me. Let's get through this together. Let's invent dances. Let's, let's make salads on a, in 30 seconds time. I don't know what we need to do. I've never been on there. Like I said, cause I figured I'd get arrested because it's a lot of girls, little girls dancing in one piece swimsuits and, you know, you literally look out of that, you give it a side eye, and what happens? You go to fucking jail. No thanks. Uh, but that exists, man. Go ahead and find me at Instagram, Snapchat. Uh, Snapchat? You can find me at Snapchat. That's where it's me and a bunch of barbers. We're having a conversation back and forth, sending each other clips of hair. It's fun. That's a great one. Go find me at Snapchat. Uh, Instagram and Snapchat, Mike40YOB. I'm there. Please find me. Uh, and follow me at Twitter, Facebook, all those places, please. Why not? Let's, let's, let's all go down in flames together. Shall we? Why not? Uh, our good friend, Ryan Dirks does the web stuff for this show. Uh, he's at facebook.com slash Ryan Dirks. Our good friend, Casey bills uploads my YouTube stuff. Thank you, Casey. You're very nice. I appreciate it. He's available. Uh, I don't think he wants me to tell you where he's available, but he's a good guy. Thanks, Casey. Want to give him a shout out. Uh, and of course our good friend, David Mex Hernandez, whom you know, he does all the music. Uh, he does the uh, artwork for this fantastic show. And it is a fantastic show. I will hear nothing against it. Uh, look, if you, if you, 
if you take nothing else from this broadcast, it's Camp Walla Walla Auschwitz. How do you not? Uh, <laughs> uh, Mex does all the artwork and the music. He's the best. You can find him at Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Uh, he's there doing amazing, cool-ass stuff. You'll go there. You can look through all of his artwork in his photos section. See the artwork he's done for me, the artwork he's done for the, the Fan Club fan page, the Westside 86 Jokers page. It's pretty cool stuff. He's got it all up there. Check it out. Look at it. Enjoy it. Revel in it. Marinate in it. Uh, he also has a closed group you can join if you want. If you become his friend on Facebook, facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez, facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Become his friend on Facebook if you would, please. Uh, not only will you be able to see that artwork, but then you can also, as I've mentioned, become a part of his closed group. It's called This Is Dumb, That's Dumb, You're Dumb, I'm Dumb. You can reach out and try to be a person who's involved in that. He will send you a series of questions. You will answer them, hopefully, uh, and you will, he will answer them correctly, and that will get you in there, which would be good. And then you can go ahead and see memes and, uh, and go ahead and participate in, in all of the, the wacky hijinks they've got in there with, uh, with a Christopher Hitchens egg and a, and a lima bean who's got a great ass. Oh, all of that is involved in this channel, this page. Uh, this is dumb. That's dumb. You're dumb. I'm dumb. The closed group on Facebook. Become his friend first. Facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. And uh, then you ask to become a member. He'll send you the questions and then you get an invite. It's perfectly easy. Also, our friend David has a podcast these days. Yes, he does. Damn it. It's called the Flem Cat Podcast. And that's P-H-L-E-G-M cat. I think you can spell cat, right? Uh, you know who can't? Terry Bradshaw. He can spell cat if you spotted him the C and the A. Uh, if you know who said that, I will consider you a genius, uh, or not a genius, just somebody who remembers shit like me. Uh, <laughs> but the Flem Cat podcast is available now. Uh, it's David telling stories of fish, sometimes of me, uh, songs, all sorts of amazing stuff available at the Flem Cat podcast. It's available right now in the iTunes store uh, or the Apple podcast store, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but it's available now for you to go ahead and grab. Please download it. Please subscribe to it. Please leave a review of it. Please tell everybody you love it. Uh, it would be good for David and for me and for everybody who's involved. Uh, although I'm not really involved, but I certainly consider it, it, uh, it my show adjacent. It's 40-year-old boy adjacent, I think. So, uh, so go give David a fucking uh, all a subscription and a great review, if you would. The Flem Cat Podcast, available now in the Apple iTunes store. Go ahead and download that podcast. Subscribe, please. That would be great. And also, if you want to hire David to do anything cool, like some artwork, if you've seen the artwork he's done for the show, you can hire him. Yeah, that's right. You can definitely hire him. Why not? Uh, I would. <laughs> if, I, if I needed artwork, I would hire the man. Uh, go ahead and check out his page and look at the stuff that he's done. And uh, so you'll be able, you'll have an idea like you can do oil and watercolors. You can do your Facebook caricature, whatever the fuck you need. But also at the same time, dudes, get this. Uh, he's done a whole other style of art. He can do anything you want and go to his website. That's the fucking I'm talking in circles. Go to his fucking website. That's what you want to do. Go to his website and you'll see a, a whole different side of him. The guy's a fucking renaissance man. He's got so many things out there for you to view and see and enjoy. And you want to hire him to do some artwork. Then go to his website. Art by That's a R T B Y D M H. Dot com. Full Bunch Media and Max Dog Mafia present the 40 year old boy year five retrospective Hungry Like the Schmidt. Take a musical trip to Mike's last 365 days with songs like these.
Detective Schmidt even brings you the Fat Boys. We're not doing the Fat Boys. I mean the police. All I want you to be. Peanut butter jelly cake. Must be some mistake. Simple call to make to a bakery. Every single Why are there sponsors for this show? Of course there are. Who, who dares think there wouldn't be? You think someone's going to pull out because of the great pandemic? No, these people are, they're in it to win it. They are solidly in, uh, ensconced right next to me, riding shotgun right at my hip. We're like the wild bunch, man. We're, uh, we're peck and pawing the shit out of you with podcasts. It's a peck and paw podcast uh, pod fest. It's a peck and paw podcast uh, network. That doesn't begin with P. What the posse. There you go. Peck and paw podcast posse. How about that? Uh, and who's included in the Peck and Paw podcast posse? Well, our good friend Fearful Jesuit over there at the Paranoid Strain. That's a that's a Paranoid Peck and Paw podcast posse. The Paranoid Strain is available right now in the iTunes Store or in the Apple Podcast Store, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. Get off my fucking back. Uh, but it's available there for you to go ahead and check out. It's available in all uh, wherever you can find podcasts. But mainly go to the Apple Podcast Store. Because I know it's there for sure. I don't, I don't want to send you on a goose chase and then it isn't someplace and then you're mad at me and nobody wants a goose chase. Wait, let me see if I can do this call. <coughs> Hi. How are you? There you go. I can do a goose call. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. You want to go find the podcast, The Paranoid Strain. It's available in all the great places. 
all the best places but the Apple Podcast Store. Dude, quit fucking talking in circles. What is wrong with you? All right, but that's what I do. Honestly, that's all I fucking do is talk in circles. This whole show could be over in four minutes, normally, and that's including fucking plugs, but here we go. If I didn't go ahead and spin off the fucking planet, we wouldn't have a goddamn show, man. As I yawn in the middle of the afternoon, hi. All right, so here's the thing. Paranoid Strain, I might have told you, like, there's there's a... A big show. It was the re- 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 recap show. That's available. But in addition to that, they've just put a uh, a small show, if you will. Hey, I think it's uh, it's probably six minutes long. Could be eight minutes long. Could be somewhere in between there. Seven possibly. Uh, and all it is is him explaining to you what his format change will be. Now I could tell you right now what that format change will be, uh, but isn't that cheating? Shouldn't you go ahead and get it from this little uh, thing that he's got there? I think you should. Uh, so please go ahead and listen. I, and so I don't want to give thing. I don't want to give it away. I know. All right. I've listened. I know. I get texts from the man himself. Fearful Jesuit. He sends me texts all the time. You know who doesn't text me? Dana Unicorn. That's depressing. I, I got to be honest. I would love to get a WhatsApp from Dana Unicorn every once in a while with her just going, hey, hello, Mike, with her fucking accent. Uh, and then I could say, oh, hello, Dana. I don't know why I would do that. She would probably be angry that I was doing some sort of weird accent back at her. Um, regardless of all of this, please go check out the Apple podcast store and listen to the Paranoid Strain podcast. Download all of them. If you haven't already subscribed, please. That'd be great. Leave a review there as well, mentioning me, talking about how much I talked it up and I told you how great it was. If you want to write him a note, you can. Here's the email address. The Paranoid Strain at gmail.com. The Paranoid Strain at gmail.com. Write him a note. Tell him you love the show. Uh, tell him you love me. I don't know if he's going to want to hear that or not, but go ahead. Why not? Just drop that in his lap. See what happens. Just do it. Just see what happens. Do it for me. Say, you know what? I also love Mike. See if he answers you. If he says something cool, if he includes that in a show, maybe. Oh, I would love to be mentioned in a show. Uh, that's a lie. I don't need that. I've got my own show. God damn it. I don't need, I don't, you don't need to mention me anywhere. Uh, please mention me. All right. Uh, <laughs> but the Paranoid Strain Podcast is available right now in the iTunes store. You can go ahead and check it out. Shrek it out, man. Uh, and and you'll find it and download it. And right now, go listen to the, the seven-minute bumper that tells you about the format change. Ooh, it's mysterious because I won't tell you about it. I demand you listen instead, and then you'll know about the format change. Huh? Right? Look at me. That's what we call in the podcast business. That's what we call in the peck and paw podcast business. That's what we call in the peck and paw peck and paw podcast posse business. A tease, not of the Monday night variety, but a tease nonetheless. Uh, the Paranoid Strain podcast rules. Go download it now, please. Thank you. You're cool. You're so cool. You're so cool. That's what Alabama says to you. If you download that podcast, why not, man? Uh, oh, Lee, coming home in a body bag. It's amazing theater. I mean, tell you something, Lee, coming home in a body bag is one of the best war movies I ever saw, and I'm not just sucking your dick. All right. Uh, it's a terrible Christian Slater. All right, so there you go, man. Go check it out. Our buddy Jesuit demands it. I demand it. We all demand it. Did you know I'm available on Cameo? I am. Look, if you think this is magic here, oh, <laughs> dude, if you're thinking to yourself, listen to the magic this dude's spinning into a fucking microphone every goddamn week. I got to get me a bite sized chunk of that. Uh, then you want to hire me on Cameo. You can hire me to call your friends. You can hire me to call your neighbors. Hire me to call your enemies. Hire me to call you. How great would that be? If you were like, oh, yeah, you know what, Mike, send me a Cameo because I like you. Then I will be happy to talk about you. Um,. And I, 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 you know, I might be, you know, look, the, sometimes they're a little long. I'm not going to lie. That's probably not a good thing because I, I think it is usually. But here's the thing. Like sometimes people want to post these uh, as, as like an advertisement. They want to tell people, hey, look, this was a cameo I got from this dude. So they'll post the whole two minute cameo or whatever. And they'll be like, yeah, check this out. Well, then I dump a 17 minute cameo in somebody's lap. And they're like, holy Jesus, man. I can't sit there with this guy for 17 goddamn minutes. Um but I, you know, I, and it, they're not all like that. Sometimes they're eight. Sometimes they're five. Like I talk till I'm done, just like with the podcast. But hire me from your cameo. Look, you'll find out. If you hire me, then you'll know. If you know, you know. And I'm here to be known. I'm, I'm an, right, because right now I'm an unknown known. Uh, or I'm a known unknown to you. But do you want me to make me a known known? I think you do. Let's not, let's stop having me be an unknown unknown. Let's make me a known known. Hire me for cameo. And if some of your friends don't know me, then they're a known, I'm a known unknown because you know me, but they don't. So let's make me a known known in their universe as well. God damn, that'll be great, won't it? All of this seems perfect. 
Um, so hire me on Cameo. That's the point. I talk in circles and you'll love it. It's fine. I'm at my desk. Sometimes I'm at a chair. Sometimes I'm on a couch. Uh, I've not done one for my car. I saw one. I saw there was a comedian. He did a bunch of them in his car. And in my head, I was like, that just looks Bush League. Because that's the way, the weird thing is the way Cameo advertises it. They're like, hey, man, uh, take some time in your car or some time while you're just, you know, waiting to make to make somebody's day while you're waiting at a traffic light. And I'm like, if I'm waiting at a traffic light and doing a Cameo, I'm a jag off. They, these people paid and I'm doing, I'm giving them 30 seconds of effort. If that, that seems shitty. Uh, but Cameo seems to think that you can just put out all these fucking bite-sized things and consumers will be happy, which maybe you are. I don't know. Um what I need to do is I need to find the sweet spot between 30 seconds and 17 minutes. If anyone can tell me what that is, if you can find that sweet spot, please let me know because I'm looking for it. Bookcameo.com is the website, the Cameo app. You can download it on your phone. Uh, hire me for one of those drive-by graduation bullshit things. I'll roast your friends. I'll talk about whatever. If it's a birthday, if somebody's got an anniversary, uh, if you just want me to tell somebody they're great or tell somebody they're fucking awful, I will do it because I need $15. Damn it. Uh, so hire me cameo me, man. Why not? Let's do it. Let's do it together. Uh, Oh, you know what? I forgot. Rob Matsushita is our good friend too. Rob Matsushita is our, uh, uh, he's also a sponsor. He's got his channel, youtube.com slash stay home two zero two zero youtube.com slash stay home 2020. Uh, he's got all sorts of clips over there. No new ones up yet. Uh, some new ones coming up in August, but he's got a bunch of, uh, I think it's like nine clips there now. And I'm in one of them. So go check them out, man. They're awesome. Go, go, uh, subscribe to that channel. Check out the videos that he's done here during quarantine. And, uh, cause what are you doing? Sitting in your house, watching your hair grow like we all are. So why not take the time to go ahead and put this on your channel? Go ahead and watch some goddamn Matsushita action. Uh, which sounds, which if it's on Pornhub, look, do not go to Pornhub for your Matsushita action. You want to go to youtube.com slash stay home 2020 for your Matsushita action. Cause it's there, buddy. Naked, raw and steaming Matsushita action waiting for you. So go ahead and check it out right now. YouTube.com, com, com well, YouTube.com, YouTube.com slash stay home 2020. Check it out. He's our man. And if he can't do it, no one can. I'll tell you that. Uh, um, so, uh, hire me for cameo. What else is there? What else can I tell you? Are there plugs? There's gotta be other plugs for this fucking thing, right? We lost the big ones. So and I, my, my order is all fucked up. Like, I don't know. Uh, Oh, I'll tell you this. We got a YouTube channel right now. It's just kind of the, the, the uh, the, uh, you know, the, the fucking podcast archives and whatever the fuck, which is great. I mean, I, I don't want to say just it's fucking 12 years of shows, man. Go check it out. If you're ever just, you know, in your house vacuuming or whatever the fuck, trying to kill some time, go listen to something from year three and go, holy Jesus, listen to this guy. He's been doing this for, he's been a jag off for a long time. He's been a fast talking jag off for quite a bit of time. This guy. Uh, so check it out. It's available right there. The YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the 40 year old boy. Go ahead and check out the archives and see all the cool ass stuff that I've done in the past. Relive my life in bite sized chunks. Uh, and there's some old stand up. There's all sorts of nonsense on there. Go ahead and check it out. Um, my brother went looking. He went snooping around my YouTube channel because he uh, I was on his quarantine comedy. If you don't know about this, go to Facebook.com slash Lenny Schmidt's quarantine comedy. And uh, and you'll see, I, I believe my the performance, the well, performance, I don't know, whatever the show I was on is embedded from this past week. I was on Wednesday, the 29th, uh, but go to facebook.com slash Lenny Schmitz quarantine.com and, uh, and go ahead and check out what I did. It was, a, it was about an hour, hour and 15 minutes with my brother. That was fun talking to him, having a good time on his quarantine comedy from my apartment to his apartment, a couple of ant farms hooked up electronically. You know me, I live on the, I live on the internet. We've talked about this. Um, so my YouTube channel exists, youtube.com slash the 40 year old boy. Also, my Twitch channel exists, twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy, twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. I'm streaming all the time, playing Jackbox puzzles, playing Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Samurai Dude, uh, mixing in some other stuff. I bought a game called Ethel, I think, which is about a girl, a detective show. I don't fucking know. Uh, but I'm looking for anything that people might like to watch. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel, twitch.tv slash uh, no, yeah, twitch.tv slash the 40-year-old boy. There you go. And uh, and check me out there. I'm doing all sorts of Twitch stuff that you should be paying attention to. I'm on at least five days a week, streaming, playing games, uh, doing the yap yap, eating weird foods. Oh, my God, I'm eating all sorts of weird foods. I got to bring that to YouTube is what I got to do. I got to bring the weird foods to YouTube. 
Um, and I'll talk about that later. Well, you know what? I don't want to talk about it till I do it because it's like, oh, I should do this and this and this. Fuck you with your should haves. Well, nobody wants to hear your should haves anymore. They want to know your wills. Not even your wills. They want to know what you did. They want to know, yeah, I did it. Nobody wants to hear your should have or you could have or you might. Just fucking do it, buddy. Buddy? I call you buddy. I'm, I'm, I'm my own buddy. Uh, Patreon exists. Did you know this? Why, yes, it does. I'm on Patreon, ladies and gentlemen. Patreon.com slash Mike40YOB. Or just go ahead and put Patreon Mike Schmidt in there, and then you'll be on my page, and there I am lurking. Uh, you can't miss me. Uh, and then go ahead and become a patron. That would be cool if you were to do that. Uh, you know who did that this week? Our good friend Anne Zill, the lovely and talented princess Anne, the panda. She went ahead and uh, and boot. She was already a Patreon subscriber, but then she boosted it up. Uh, her monthly her monthly stipend, her monthly gift, and uh, and it's amazing. You're so nice to think of me. Thank you so much, Anne. Uh, you're the best. I appreciate it. And uh, so there you go. You can do. You can be like Anne Zill. Why wouldn't you do that? Go to Patreon. You can become. A subscriber, a patron at Patreon, you can go ahead and uh, boost up your uh, whatever you give. Uh, it's nice of you to think of me either way. And also, uh, if you go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com, in the upper right-hand corner, there's a little Schmitty. He's got his pocket out. It says Donate. And you can click on that and give money via PayPal. Because uh, as I've said and I say all the time, and I'm going to keep saying it because why not? Uh, if you were going to support this show, this is a very good time to do it. Uh, because we've lost one affiliation and the germ is here and uh, all sorts of stuff. You know this. We, you're living the same life I'm living. You guys are out there working hard. We're all working hard. We're all trying to make it work. And uh, anybody who wants to go ahead and become a patron at Patreon and continue me furthering my career and the dream of being a guy who makes comedy happen and whatever the fuck. And thank you so much for doing that. Uh, you can do that. Patreon.com slash Mike40YOB, uh, I believe. Or it might be Patreon.com slash the 40-year-old boy. Maybe I should get the address done. Hold on. Let me double check. Let me get the address before you guys are like, well, what one is it? I, I couldn't find it. Patreon.com slash Mike40YOB. I was right the first time. Go ahead and check it out, please. Become a person who is a patron. A Patreon like our friend Anzil and other people. So many other people who go ahead and sign up. And, uh, and thank you, man, because what you're doing is keeping me afloat. And I appreciate it. And I, I have so many thank yous to give out this week because people were very kind to me this week. Uh, as you know, or you may not know, it was my birthday on Wednesday. I think I said it earlier in the show, but I, I alluded to it, but I'll tell you it now. Uh, and if you're new to the show, which you're probably not, let's, let's put it this way. If you're new to the show, there's no way you made it to this point. You bailed. Uh, cause you didn't, you didn't think there was going to be anything after the, the, the break. <laughs> you're like, he's not going to talk some more, is he? Yes, I am. That's why I'm here. So, uh, so if you're a person who is like, ah, oh, I, I'm new to this. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you that, uh, it was my birthday on Wednesday and, and I'm, I, uh, this it's, it's weird to even say this out loud. Uh, but I'm now 53 years old, which now that sounds old, like 40 never really sounded old or even 45, 50 didn't even sound old, but 53, that's that's just that's just 12 years away from 65, man. That's not good at all. That's that's 17 years away from 70. Jesus fuck. That's holy shit. This is 53. That's that's 47 years away from 100. What what the hell, man? Uh, but it's true and that's me and I got my bones creaking and and my hips breaking and every other goddamn thing. I'm sure I've got blood diseases I don't even know about, but uh but yet I'm here. And I still talk to you and it is still the 40 year old boy. Yes, I know. Cause there are people who were like, uh, one person was very nice on Facebook and they wrote, Hey, happy, uh, the, the youngest or the oldest 40 year old boy I know or whatever. And I was like, yep, it's the 13th anniversary of my 40th birthday, which might be wrong. I don't want to do the math on that. It seems to make sense, but it might not be right. But, uh, you know, the show's called the 40 year old boy. That's not fucking changing. The branding on it is too good. Uh, I, I, you know, I know that sounds ridiculous, but, but the 40 year old boy is just a fucking solid name. You can't change it every year. And also who's going to tune into a show called the 53 year old boy. That just sounds like you're making shit up at that point. Uh, but I thank you for sticking with me as long as you have, if you've been here from the beginning, that's great. If you're new, that's great as well. I do appreciate it. Um, but this week on my birthday, uh, there were some listeners who were very kind and they wanted to have a zoom call with me. And these are people who, you know, I've gone to meet in the past. I've gone to see them in their places where they live. The people in Canada, certainly every, every summer we would do Schmidtapalooza and I would show up in Canada and people were always very kind to me and gave gifts and, uh, you know, 
anybody who's invested themselves in giving me anything at all that forwards my career or uh, lets me think that this is still a viable idea, I am eternally grateful. And then I was reminded once again this week just how lucky I am to have so many people who care or who are in my corner. You care. Everybody cares. Uh, Wednesday, I did a Zoom call with, uh, I think it was only like 10 or 12 people on there. Uh, new people like our friend Amethyst J. Well, that's her, that's her online name. I don't want to say her real name because she didn't consent to that. Um, but there are people who are, you know, they, they hang out in the Twitch channel, like our friend Never Not Debbie, people like that. They, uh, they were very kind, and then they, they wanted to join the Zoom call just to hang out. But then there were people who joined the Zoom call who wound up giving me, who sent gifts and wanted me to open them on the, on the uh, stream or on the Zoom because, as you know, I've done that in the past on the Christmas shows for Twitch, and so people sent gifts. I went to the P.O. Box. I grabbed stuff. And I wanted to go ahead and thank people now who thought of me this week. Um, there were people who thought of me and sent actual uh, gifts. There were people who sent just fucking donations, which were amazing. Uh, our friend Murph, our buddy Murph in Illinois, he fucking thought of me and he sent me a donation. Thank you so much, Murph. You're amazing. And he was also on the Zoom call. Uh, our friend Blind Scott sent me a donation and uh and thank you and he he did not make the zoom call but he did make the twitch stream uh which you think to yourself well that's a blind dude what's he doing in twitch well he's not officially blind blind and i will say this because i was calling him blind scott and i think i mentioned might have mentioned it on the show like i called him blind scott so much that in my head i'm like is this a dick move like should i not be calling this guy blind scott because he is i mean he is blind but it's like it's whatever that fuck amateur blind i don't know what you want to fucking call it he's not he's not officially like Stevie Wonder, Tin Cup, Cane Blind, I don't think. I think he's just like squinty. Hey, what are all these weird colors blind? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know man. I'm not a fucking medical professional. But he's uh, he's one of those, man. So he's Blind Scott. So I kept calling him Blind Scott. And in my brain, in my head, I'm like, fuck, man, that's not nice to call him Blind Scott all the fucking time. But then sure enough, uh, he was on the stream. And he actually, his Twitch name was Blind Scott. And I'm like, fuck, dude, I... I always wonder if I'm saying that and it's wrong. And he's like, oh, no, dude, that's fucking cool. And I'm like, all right, good. As long as he approves of it, I'm totally happy. Thank you. Um, but, yeah, so he's so he's blind Scott. Regardless of whomever, whomever he is, he's blind Scott. And he's helped with the show in the past. He's subscribed for a long time. And uh, and he sent me a donation for my birthday. And he's just like, you know, use it. To, he, he wanted me to buy sushi with it, which I'll, I'll tell you about in just a second. But um, so Murph and, and blind Scott went ahead and sent donations. Uh, you know what? I, I, I'm told listener Jan sent a card, but I haven't, it hasn't arrived yet because she sent it from another country. Um, I didn't get to the PO box today, but I will get to the PO box on Monday and I will go ahead and find it and say, Hey, look at this from Jan. And I'll talk about it next week, maybe, or I'll just, perhaps I'll just read it and I'll think to myself, Hmm, Jan, thank you. Uh, who, who knows, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, but thank you for thinking of me and, and sending that. That's very cool of you. Um, our good friend, uh, well, all right. I, I've mentioned that, that Murph and blind Scott sent donations. Our friend Tanya, who's in Canada, Tanya and Mike Tanya is always gracious to me. She sends stuff when we're Twitch streaming. She's just, I don't even know. I don't know why she's so kind to me, but she is. And it makes me incredibly happy. I love her. I love, I love Mike, her husband. They're just They've always been really gracious and nice to me, and I appreciate them very much. And she sent a donation for my birthday. Thank you so much, Tanya. Uh, so that was Tanya and Murph and Blind Scott who sent donations. Um, there were other people uh, who sent stuff as well. Uh, our good friend Beach, uh, who we, whom we've talked about here, Bridget, who has come to visit me here. Um, you know, I, I, I'm very lucky. That, that she is it wants to spend any time with me. She's very cool, and I appreciate that. And she was very generous to me, and she also sent me, she sent me, uh, night like I, she sent me too much stuff, is what she sent. She sent me some books, which are awesome. I love books. She sent me a, uh, she sent me a Conversations with Orson Welles books because I am fascinated with Orson Welles, and so she sent me that along with two books written by a baseball writer that I love, a guy named Keith Law who used to write for ESPN, but now he writes for The Athletic, and she sent me those books. Uh, so that's three books now I have to read. I have a, Dude, I have a pile of fucking books to read. I've got those three. I've got uh, Pat gave me a Ted Templeman biography and a Black Crows book, um, and then and then other books I'm, I'm about to mention. But uh, Beach not only sent me that, but she also sent me a wallet, which was, was very nice. Like, it's a very soft... It's like one of those soft 
wallets that you could probably wrap your cock in. You know what I mean? It's just it's just like crazy nice Italian leather, and you're like, ah, this is totally comfortable and soft. Um, so it's it's like swaddling clothes of some sort. It almost seems it almost seems a crime to put dirty, filthy cash in it. It's just it's too good for that. I need to find something, some gold doubloons or something I can put in there. I don't know. Are those dirty? I'm not sure. Stocks and bonds. It seems like a rich people wallet. I need rich people stuff. I know they have cash, but they got some other stuff, right? Don't they like fucking uh, uh, whale teeth? Maybe that maybe I'll fill that soft Italian wallet with whales teeth. That sounds like a rich people thing to do, doesn't it? Uh, but bridge, uh, you know, amazing that Beach would send me these books and she sent me the wallet and then she sent me a zoom laptop stand because I do zoom poker on Sundays with the guys. And then Beach and I have been doing like movie nights where she's, you know, where she lives in Jersey. Uh, we'll get together and we'll watch a movie together on, on Netflix or Amazon and we'll synchronize with like three, two, one knives. Cause we watched knives out and we watched, Logan Lucky and I watched Hereditary together, so it's uh, it's providing an ocean of sanity. Uh, I should say an island of sanity and an ocean of uncertainty. I guess is what I would say. Um, it's nice of her to think of me and the laptop stand because usually I would have to bring five or six books, which, as you know, I have. I have them, uh, but I would have to bring like six books over to my desk and put my laptop on it because then the camera's high enough. Because I, you know, I'm tall and I'm sitting tall in the chair. You don't care. Uh, but she brought me this laptop stand and it was, it's, it's really, I'm shocked at how effective it was. At first I saw it, I was kind of low, but all you just do is tip your laptop a little further back and then it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Uh, the gloves, the wallet, the books she sent, um, the zoom stand. Oh, I didn't even mention the gloves. No, I'm saying gloves, dude. She sent me grilling gloves. They're like, they're made of like fireproof silicone or whatever. And so I can get my cast iron skillet out of the oven if I bake stuff and all that. So they're fireproof. And, uh, and also, I will tell you this, you can jerk off with them all goddamn day, and they're so comfortable. Oh, dude, because they're like, they're, they're fire engine red rubber. You put them on, and, uh, and you just cover them with Crisco, and you just go to work. Just violate yourself all goddamn day. It works out perfectly. Uh, but I will tell you this, do not touch your books once you're jerking off. You got to take off the lubed up Crisco gloves once you're done jerking off, because you don't want to smear your pages up. That's why you got to read separately from jerking off. Uh, so she sent me gloves and a wallet and a laptop stand and books and just above and beyond. So thank you, Beach. That's amazing. Um, our good friend, Matthew Henshaw thought of me as well. And he, he sent me, uh, he sent me a book as well. <laughs> um, he, he sends me a lot of like hard boiled, violent books, which I like. So, uh, I don't, I, I honestly, the, the book is, I should have had it on the desk, but I, he sent it and I'm going to read it. It looks like a quick reads. So I'll blaze through that. Uh, and then he also sent me, uh, I may have talked on here about bone Tomahawk, the movie bone Tomahawk. I think I have, uh, but bone Tomahawk, but the guy who made it also made a movie called this, uh, like riot and cell block, whatever the fuck. And it's Vince Vaughn smashes a guy's face and it's just, it's violent, violent, violent. But he made a movie called dragged across concrete with Vince Vaughn and Mel Gibson. And it's not streaming anywhere. You have to have like a stars channel subscription, all these different things. And I've mentioned on the show that I've not been able to find it. And guess what? It doesn't matter now because the Blu-ray arrived for my birthday, dragged across concrete, Mel Gibson, Vince Vaughn, all sorts of violent bullshit, courtesy of our friend Matthew Henshaw and his girlfriend Jenny and his cat Rumi. Thank you so much, Matthew, for thinking of me. I appreciate it. Uh, so that's Beej, that's, that's Matthew, that's Tanya, that's Murph, that's Blind Scott, that's Jan who sent a card. Uh, amazing people sending really nice things. Uh, Our friend Mike Caldwell, Michael Caldwell is a friend from Boston and he reached out to me and, uh, you know, he used to be a Patreon person. And then uh, he sent me a donation this week and I was like, dude, you don't have to do that. He because he um, Michael was going through some stuff. You know, his wife, Kathleen, is is also a friend of the show. And uh, Kathleen wound up uh, becoming ill, unfortunately. I think I've, I've talked about this on the show before. But it was the, you know, the kind of illness where you might have to keep going to get visits and you might have to keep getting therapy and you might have to keep going for sessions of some sort. And uh, I went through it with Karen and and it's incredibly difficult. It's very trying. It can really wear you the fuck out. Was I, And I also was not very I was not the best husband during it. I did what I could and did my best at the time, which probably wasn't good enough, but uh, Karen made it through cause she was very strong and she survived. And, and I'm proud to say, and happy to say, uh, that Michael's wife, Kathleen is, is in full remission 
and she's made it through as well. So I'm, I'm grateful for that because Michael has also been with this show from the beginning. And, um, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I, I, it's, uh, I, I never wanted to seem performative. I never wanted to look like I'm taking it for granted. Um, when I thank you guys, but, uh, but the very fact that you would even listen, let alone send things is, is incredible. It's unbelievable and so kind and it makes me very happy. And thank you, Michael, for thinking of me. So Michael sent me a donation and I'm like, dude, if you need it back, because I know what's going on with Kathleen or whatever, you know, after we talked about it and he goes, no, man, he goes, I, I feel like after, you know, not being able to give a Patreon, I want to give this now. And he also sent me something and I'm like, dude, you don't have to send me anything in addition to sending a donation. Uh, but then when he sent me the, the thing and I opened it, uh, I could not have been happier. Because our friend Michael sent me <laughs> a hoodie. Uh, now, look, I, some of you may know of my affinity for certain films. Absolutely, I love Quentin Tarantino. Uh, but there's there's all sorts of comedy films that I love. And one of them is Coming to America. And uh, as as I've, <laughs> I've said on the show before, when you think of garbage, think of Akeem. Uh, or, or a- any of the, you know, the, the fucking the barbershop. All of that stuff is beautiful. It's just so great. Um but our friend uh, Michael found a hoodie, and on it, it has Eddie Murphy's face as Akeem with the fucking hat from the fast food place. And it says, when you think of garbage, think of Akeem. It's right there on the front of the hoodie. And it's beautiful. I can't wait to wear it. It doesn't fit now because of all the fucking horrifying damage I've done to myself because of what's going on during the quarantine. But now I have an even bigger reason to lose weight so I can squeeze into this fucking hoodie and look good because goddamn, is it great? It looks, it just, I opened it up and I just, I fucking laughed for like a minute. I was like, dude, no fucking way. Uh, and I sent a picture of it to him and, and texted it to him. And he was like, oh man, I'm so happy you liked it. And he said that I mentioned it on, I, you know, I mentioned that line on the show he said recently he goes once i heard you say that i was so excited uh so there you go so i was very happy to get that hoodie uh can't wait to wear it i'll put a picture of it up on the joker's page but thank you so much for thinking of me michael uh amazing just above and beyond and i appreciate it so much uh also uh i've mentioned these people and i've mentioned canada and i've mentioned people giving me things um there are friends of mine in canada whom i've alluded to before our friends uh ken and tricia they are married. They live in Canada together. Now, Trish has been here before. She's come to visit. She actually went to the Monday Night Teas with me once. Uh, and whenever I go to Canada, she's just over and above generous. You know, she she she's made things for me. She's crafted things for me. She's she's hand uh, knitted things. Uh, dream, wish, believe. I have it uh, right now. I'm looking at it. Uh, of course, I have bad eyesight, so I'm pretty sure that's what it says. But it's over on the shelf. I'm looking right at it. It's not. It's not three feet away from me. And that'll tell you just how bad my eyes are that I can't see it because uh, I'm sitting in the dark. But uh, Patricia has done craft printing projects. They've sent me donations. Her and Ken have been over and above and beyond uh, generous. And they did it again. They sent me a donation, which was really nice. Uh, and, and amazing. And the fact that they would even think of me that way is, is so cool. But also, uh, they sent two gifts. They came separately and I opened them and one of them was a frame. So I was like, all right, I don't know if that's cool. It's an empty frame. And I'm, I'm so I assumed that the second gift would have something to do with the frame. Uh, and, and I opened it up and dudes, uh, as you know, David used to do the artwork for this show every week. Like there would be a, a watercolor that came out with the actual show. And then when the recording schedule changed, David's thing changed and he, he was, you know, it just didn't work out. So he does them now, but he does them, you know, after three or four days, he goes ahead and he does artwork and it goes on YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, but in the, in the heyday when we were doing, when he was able to do the different watercolors every week, I had a particular favorite one. Uh, I've alluded to it on the show before. And as a matter of fact, a listener, Heidi, made me a magnet of this artwork. And it was uh, it was around the time that I did Mark Maron's podcast. And I uh, I talked about it on the air without having without And people got they rallied to my defense. They wrote Mark Maron. He got fucking pissed. And I did a bit about burning bridges. And, and uh, so one of the paintings Max made was called Gapping the Bridge. And it's little Schmitty, the little Schmitty character. And he's leaning on a bridge that's on fire. But he has a gasoline can at his feet and a smirk. 
uh, which indicates that you know what he is. Uh, he burns the fuck out of bridges, and he doesn't seem to care. And and it was like that on this show for a very long time, and to a certain extent, sometimes it still is. Uh, I like to think I've grown and changed just a little bit, but back then I just didn't give a fuck, really. Until after all the shit hit the fan and the bridge was burned down, and I'm like, oh, fuck, I needed that bridge. <laughs> uh, but the painting, it just to me, it said everything there was to say about this show. It was the character leaning and uh, had his arms crossed, gas can at his feet, bridge in flames, and him just fucking smirking to camera. And I loved it. It's, it's one of my favorite things. It's absolutely my favorite artwork that's ever come out of this show. And uh, in addition, there was another one he did where it's, it's a grown-up me inside a little Schmitty suit, and I have that one framed in my house. Uh, Max, Max sent it to me, and it's framed. But um, I will tell you this. I opened up what, what Tresha and Ken sent me, and I don't know what the term is. Bedazzle. I, 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 it's a crafting thing, but she... She made a, uh, it's, it's gotta be like a 15 by 18. I don't know. I I don't know. Measurements. The fuck do I know? It's a, uh, it's a crafting project of that very same watercolor and it matches. It's phenomenal. It looks perfect. And it goes in the frame that she sent me. And I, I, I opened it up. I'm like, come on. I mean, and, you know, in the past, I've had gifts. I've, I've got a Funko of Little Schmitty that people have made, crayon sets. Uh, you never cease to amaze me with your creativity and generosity. Everybody who reaches out and does a cool thing. And I know Tresha made that by hand, dude. And it matches. It ma- That's the thing is it matches the artwork uh, down to the green in, in, my, in my eyes. It, you know, it's like it's so it's craziness. And the frame, and and so I will I will put that on the Joker's page as well. Uh, I still haven't put it in the frame, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I'm scared to touch it because it's so seemingly fragile that it seems to me like I don't want to uh, I don't want to fuck it up or break it or do anything or tear it. I I don't know, <laughs> but but I will put it in the frame. Maybe I'll take a picture of it out of the frame and then and then post that, and then I'll you know put, I'll post them together. But. Um, and and the note from Treasure said, "Happy birthday! Hope the best life can give you. We miss you. Next year's fingers crossed because I I go to Canada and visit them. Love and hugs from both of us, Tresha and Ken. Happy birthday! And uh, man, you guys are just perfect. You got you guys are just so cool to me all the time. Uh, and, and I know this is I do this a couple times a year, but it's important that you know." It's important that you know that this show doesn't exist without you. You know, when people write me on my Facebook page for my birthday or whatever, people are like, man, I've been here from the beginning. And I just write, man, if you keep listening, I'll keep talking. That's all that matters. You know, I will keep doing a show. If you want to listen to it, I'll do it. I will be here forever. It's the one thing I own. It's the one thing that's mine. It's the one thing that I control. And that's because of you guys. You know, so many people initially followed me over from Never Not Funny after a year, for fuck's sake. They followed me, which was great. And uh, it's only grown since. And there are people who've been here for 12 years. There's people who've been here for a year. There's people who've been here for a month, courtesy of Twitch. They found me on there. They started listening and they wrote me and they're like, oh, my God, your show. And I'm like, yeah, thank you. Uh, and I And if you've been here for a month, thank you. And if you've been here for a year, Thank you. And if you've been here for 12 years, none of this happens without you guys. And I appreciate it very much. And, and, uh, it might be ludicrous to be 40 and or 53 and doing a show called the 40 year old boy. But, uh, but every day you guys show me that it's not every day when I doubt myself, I can, I can, I can look at my wall and see a framed gapping the bridge watercolor from Tresha and Ken, or I can see books or I can look at my fire engine, red gloves or, or, or just Tanya's name in an email or Michael Caldwell sending me a text or Ann Zill bumping up her Patreon or KC helping me out, uh, free of charge with the YouTube. And, and of course all the, all the work David has done over the years. And, and it, it, it makes me feel incredibly accomplished to be in the company of such special people who have allowed me to chase a dream for as long as I have. And 
we're still running. Uh, we're running a lot slower these days because the quarantine has fucked me up, but we're still chasing it. And, uh, and if anything, you know, the very fact that we've had this show for so long and you guys have supported for so long, that's, uh, that's helped during the germ because a lot of comedians didn't have this fan base, this online fan base. A lot of these comedians were, uh, you know, they've walked into a zoom situation where they don't know what to do or they, they're all starting it at fucking home plate. They're all starting at ground zero and I'm, I'm on the fucking moon. Thanks to you guys. And I appreciate it very much. And I love you. And the show doesn't happen without you. And, uh, and I will keep talking if you will keep listening and your generosity never ceases to amaze me. And, uh, and I appreciate it very much. Thank you. And, uh, you know, normally I'm ranting and raving here at the end of the goddamn show, but let's just let fucking David take us out. Uh, like a normal, let's, let's be normal for once. Should we, shouldn't we? No, you know what? Fuck that. I'm not even going to be fucking normal. God damn it. I'm not going to go ahead and pull out another show. This show's about ranting. This show's about raving. This show's about fucking coming down, opening my goddamn mouth and letting anything come flying out of the fucking thing. And that's it. I couldn't possibly go ahead and be like, oh, well, you know, here's the thing. Let's not fuck you, man. Let's make it a There's anything I like more than me It's people who like me I love me, but if you love me I love you, cause you know why We both love me, how great am I Let's talk about that for a while And by a while, I mean forever Podcast! Podcast! Podcast.